We are now in game number four of this Team Liquid show match between Tasia and TLO. TLO is right now in the lead 2-1. to one. It is a BO5, so if TLO wins this game, he takes it all, which is just the pride. Maybe it's a point to shave his beard, beating Tasia, his teammate, in a straight-up BO5, 100% honest, no cheese at all yet. TLO has just been playing so well. Maybe last game you could qualify as cheese. TLO being very aggressive after Tasia doing the uh, bunker rush. And it wasn't like a cheesy bunker rush at all. But uh, Tasia made a mistake taking out those rocks. And TLO did capitalize on it. It is Antigua Shipyards. And the way I talk about this map, you may think I hate this map. Because... It's one of those maps that almost never ends out being 100% mined out. Whoever controls like this mid area, the mid base, generally can take more bases over to the side and just have control of the game. And it's very hard for whoever doesn't have the middle to do anything. So it's really a battle for the middle of the map, which is interesting. A lot of Terran players love this map because they can easily go on three bases. A lot of Zerg players like Stefano love this map because Terrans will go on three bases and it sets them up for like a vicious 2-2 speed link timing attack when they don't have too many tanks out and you just do so much damage. So there's a lot of cool play on this map. It is one of those maps where Mutalisk play is, I won't say impossible because I've seen some players do it recently. But it's highly unfavored to do any Mutalisk base play because, again, it's a battle for this middle of the map. Infestors are great at holding small positions. Mutalisks are great at holding entire maps. On this map, the Terran player just gets up a few missile turrets. The Mutas will do damage, but as long as he can hold this middle, the Terran player is happy because eventually he will starve out the Zerg player. So... Definitely one of those maps that is has a very interesting mid-game and does create for very, very great games. TLO is going to be going out to Drone Scout at 15. I generally don't like the 15 Drone Scout. There's a reason why. I just can't come up with it this very second. Tech Lab first on this barracks. This is a Reaper expand most likely. It looks like that from Tasia, And he does this quite a bit. If the bunker does get up, it's GG right there. Just because you can't really build a spine call to defend against a Reaper in a bunker because those D8 charges are just too darn good. And I know why I don't like this. Because this wall can get up and it won't tell you anything. If you send like a 12 or 13 drone scout, the wall gets up. You know they cut something to do that. And additionally you can see the timing of this barracks. Not proven to be useful in this case because Tasia did get that. But then you can see if a gas came before barracks. And that is huge. Because if a gas comes before barracks, and you're playing a play that doesn't involve taking gases, a Hellion run by is going to come much earlier. They're going to have four Hellions when you think they'll have two. They run into your main, and oftentimes it is GG right then and there. And additionally, tanks and medevacs come out that much sooner with that play. So the 13 Drone Scout really does tell you more. It's kind of telling TLO something just because... Tasia is putting his command center on that low ground, and he got this tech lab. But if Tasia built the command center up here, didn't get the tech lab, had marines building, then it would be very hard for TLO to know exactly what Tasia is doing. Tasia does get two reapers, and now he's going to be moving across the map, and we'll see what TLO ends up doing to deal with this. Going to be getting extra queens out, and that is definitely needed, so he will have four queens. This is also normal for TLO to do. And the Overlord just watching that little um, high ground area. There we go. So now we can see the Reapers coming into his middle line. Get his Queens ready to defend against them. The Reapers will have to back on off. So nice job there. Now he has to get the creep spread between these two bases. I think that should be prioritized so TLO can get the Queens easily between the bases. And maybe this small little portion is enough to not really matter. And uh, the Reaper is not really doing all that much. But it is controlling the map just like Hellions would. It allows for an earlier command center. And also kind of gives a Zerg player a false sense of security. What we saw in, I forget who Tasia was playing. I think it was actually a lot of Korean letters and I don't remember. I couldn't translate the name. But the Zerg player spread creep like mad. And then Tasia came up, split all his units, and also can micro these Reapers like it's his business. I would say job, but it is his job. If the Queens go off of creep, 
the Reapers can kill them without taking any damage. That is how good Tasia's Reaper Micro is. It is on NA, so maybe he won't be able to do that. And it looks like maybe he can. But T TLO not really giving him the chance to do that. But what I was saying, you get a lot of creep teams out. You're spread all across the map. You're like, I'm doing great, just droning. I have complete map control. Tasia comes out, splits all his units around, throws a scan instantaneously. That scan is a blackout. All your tumors go down. The creep recedes. And Tasia suddenly is on the same number of bases as you because these reapers allow him to get bases up quicker. And it's downhill from there. All that map security was just a false sense of security. And then Tasia just abuses that like no end with his constant, constant aggression with bio play. And I think this entire show match in these four games, we've only seen like three tanks. So you can see how much Tasia is actually preferring bio play in these games. I don't think TLO would say, hey, don't build tanks against me, dude. Because many Terran players do build tanks. So practicing against this strategy isn't really that common. This is just what Tasia enjoys doing. Lings with speed coming out, that is the end of these Reapers, but that is a lot of Marines out to deal with these Lings. And one, two, three, six, seven Marines I think did die there. Two, quite a few Lings, and now the, uh, Tasia is moving on across the map. Gonna wait till he gets some more Marines, does have one one on the way at the same time. Uh, again, about ten seconds behind TLO's upgrades but does have 1-1 one, one on the way. TLO has insanely fast upgrades, and now Tasia don't like this play at all from Tasia. He's going to be floating his factory over. Yes, it gives vision. That is cool. What does this also do? It tells TLO there's going to be no tanks. And when you're not dealing with tanks, you can produce a lot of lings, banelings. You really don't have to worry about tanks if you know the factory's floating. So don't really agree with this floating off the factory, but Tasia he knows best. I would rather just use a scan, or a few scans, and say, yeah, it's not economically efficient, but at least you may think I'm building tanks. So TLO right now knows this is going to be pure bioplay, also with a lot of medevacs, so he probably knows a lot of drops are going to be coming around, and we do have that overload speed now just finishing it. So you can see how quickly TLO ends up getting that overload speed. Pretty much as soon as his layer finishes, he's like, yep, it's time for that overload speed. And look at his map vision. That is absolutely ridiculous. And now throwing at the scan a little bit early. I'd like to see Tasia split his units up around the map before he gets that scan so it's instant blackout. But maybe that was risky in this scenario and Tasia decided not to do it because bird banelings could be out, possibly. Now Marines are going to be stimming on back and have to kite against these banelings. TLO bring those lings back. And that is a lot of lings. Those Marines splitting up with a great concave. Notice how he's just moving a small group of Marines at the same time and also not moving his medevacs. Medevacs get healing. They don't stop healing, so that's more effective. And the Marines that don't stop moving are more effective with their shots. Banelings being morphed, and they do go down before they even finish. Those Marines are junkies, though. They are very injured. Going to be going up slowly but surely. This link count is not in a high number, but it is just enough to make Tasia lift up. 53 SCVs, 268 drones. Tasia has a lot more Marines on the way. Getting more barracks. Creep still spraying again. We I look at the creep. It's at the edge. TLO so good with his creep. Again, just at the edge. He even has Tumas Hockey, but it doesn't look like he's doing anything with them. Maybe that's something he's working on. Hockeying the Tumas so he can do that even quicker. That takes a little bit more focus to do. Another scan going down. Tasia trying to kill off the creep, but it's spreading faster than Tasia can actually kill it. Here we go. The factory is going to come in. See this hive timing. And this, maybe this is why he lifts that up. So he can see the hive timing, but again, much would rather prefer just using a scan there. We don't have him producing another factory, so it's still not going to be going with tank play, just pure bio play. And we have seen Rainbow against B Water just absolutely demolish this play. And I believe B Water was Rainbow. So we'll see if Tasia can do better. He is in a good situation ahead of TLO on supply. 
Building his command center down here, TLO may think that is Tasia's third base just starting when this order command has been done and is going to be lifting up to go over to that third. That is really the fourth base. And TLO, look at this creep spread. It's a battle for the middle of the map at the mid game. That's what I said. Well, it's the mid game, and TLO has complete vision of the middle of the map. Actually, doesn't have vision of this area, but you know what I mean. Tasia doing a doom drop, but TLO, he knows it. Gonna be reacting already. That bailing speed, not. Is it done? No, not being researched, and that could be a mistake. Tasia can see all the lings right here. That is just a lone marine. That is not a medvac doing a drop at the third base. So Tasia now going to be pulling back. Overlord does see the third base timing. And now will he be getting out of there? If TLO didn't park him, he would definitely. But yes, even ends up getting out. Overlord speed is nice to have. We do have spine claws going up at this third base to kind of deal with drops. Few marines just hang out right down here. Tasia going to be dropping that, killing off this one tumor before it can spread again. Looking at the tumors, they're on the edge of the creep. I can't really find a time when tumors that could be morphing aren't at the edge of the creep. TLO, so good about that creep spread. And now, he has infested place, so Tasia has to keep all his units split up even as he moves. Look at that. Sees infestors, and he's like, oh, that could have been bad. So everything is very well split. 3-3 three, three on the way for both players. Tasia holding this middle of the map, staying split up, keeping everything relatively well split. But right there wasn't good, but Tasia does fix that. Now going up into a medevac, those bailings don't have speed. Speed still isn't being researched. Phone growth goes down, so it doesn't matter. Marines can't run anyways. And that drop is going to be going to the third base, but there are spine callers there. Beautiful focus targeting by Tasia. You may think he had tanks with his force to take that out. No sir, no tanks at all. Just beautiful force targeting by Tasia to pick off those banelings. Trying to do a drop here. TLO's like, no, 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 not happening. He is getting ultra lisked right now. And, um... Those lings meeting their death relatively quickly. 158 supply 2, 151. TLO is at hive tech. Not building all, uh, broodlords, though. Tasia gonna be taking the gold base. And as I said, all Tasia has to do now hold this middle of the area, but I don't know if that holds true when Tasia is just playing this pure bio playstyle, and that holds true with tank play. Hold the middle with tanks, you're not going to be breaking that. Hold the middle with bio? I honestly don't know. TLO has a great chance of being able to break this play if Tasia gets caught off good. He has no buffer for safety. Three Marines still just sitting down there. Medivac wants to do something. Looks like he is going to be going around trying to pick off Overlord, but they are a little bit fast for that. Tasia going to try to deny this one hatch. Wings are coming in. They do have 2-2 two, two, knocking adrenal glands. Maybe that's done. We will find out relatively soon as this battle does finish. An ultra list girl coming in. So here we go. Big battle is going to be coming down. And there's ultras getting forced on it by the Mirage. But a huge fall of growth right there. Getting another one. And a lot of Marines do go down. And now those Infestors do fall. But there's still a lot of stuff. From Tasia, not enough infestors from TLO. Bailing speed being now researched. Adrenal glands was finished. Fourth base is going to be falling. Ultras coming on down. The fourth base, Fungal Growth goes down, does get canceled. That drone does live. But there are so many medevacs here. You need a lot of infestors to do this. To kill, like, units when there's almost a medevac every two units. And Tasia going in very nice areas with his units. And there's Banelings going out. Nice split by Tasia. Those Ultralists do have to retreat. And Tasia is ahead by 20 supply with just this Marine Marauder medevac play against Hive Tech. And maybe what Destiny said is true. Ultras, not good. Or maybe I should start saying, maybe what Idris says is true. I know Ultras are bad units, but they shouldn't be this bad. I think that is a relatively cool Idris quote. Those Ultras really low on health. Will TLO transfuse them? No, he won't, so they do fall, and there goes the GG. Tasia going to be taking that. We will be going into an ace match. And that game, 
I think will be a good game to judge TLO's early game injecting. What do you say, guys? Let's go to game four on this, and we will be looking at his injects. Tejas Mako may also be a good game to look at this one now. So, let's see here. That was... Tigo Shipyard. Boom. So this is looking a little bit better. I didn't see anything. My eyes aren't on the monitor. I'm going to be guessing. Just one quick glance. Between 7.8 and 8.4. At 10 minutes. 9.6. Still can't do that. One day, I will be getting good at that. 9.6, still not good. That's not as good as it should be. It should be, what I say is acceptable, is 7.6 to 8. 5.4, exceptional. That's the best I've ever seen. Damaga and Abver are the only people that I've seen that have hit that. And most importantly, Abver didn't hockey his hatches individually when he did that. I have no clue how he did it. But yeah, that that is what you want to shoot for. That is the... Uh, Bar. If you can top that, good. So let's go to Port Macro. I mean, not Port. Tasia Macro. Relatively good. What I like seeing is even. I don't like seeing huge spikes. If I do see spikes, I like to see them consistent. This, that's what I like. All these constant, this line right here, that is what I really like seeing. Just constant macro. I don't like seeing these little wavy things. I don't know if that's good or bad. But generally when you do a wave to me, that says you had a lot of minerals. So you built a lot. To me, if it's just completely level, that means you're perfect. And Tasia stays around this level relatively good. Maybe I can put a request in for SE2 gears to do some type of calculation with this so it's not just me eyeballing it and we can get kind of like an idle racks timing or something that would be really nice to have especially for Protoss with warp gates oh man would that be beautiful but um yeah don't want to do too much resources spent TLO he is Zerk he always spends more it's a lot more than I thought at the end of the game, Tasia did have 1k, 1.2k stacked up. So that does make a small difference, at least in the gas differential. But, hope you enjoy the game. Go to game four, uh, game five, ace match time. Man, this has just been flying by. Don't forget to leave a comment. Because, well, that means you care. And that is cool. I don't have anything more to say.